certainly share your view, Senator uh, Crapo. Our next two senators will be Senator Carper and then Senator Cornyn. Yeah. Thanks, uh, thanks, Mr. Chairman. Welcome, everybody. Nice to see you. Thanks for your presence and your input today. Uh, I, um, last uh, Congress, I introduced legislation along with Senator Cornyn, um, Senator, uh, Senators Menendez, and uh, Tim Scott, um, uh, all members of this committee. And it's called the uh, Customs Trade Partnership Against Terrorism Pilot Program Act. It has a, an acronym, as you know. I hate acronyms. And uh, I'm, uh, th th I'm inclined not to use one uh, in, this, in this case. But it was uh, approved, I think, unanimously by both uh, the Homeland Security uh, and Government Affairs Committee, on which I serve, and was approved by the, the, full, uh, the full Senate, as you may recall. Our bill would, uh, would expand a successful program within the Customs and Border Protection Agency that I'd like to think of as kind of like as a TSA pre-check. TSA pre-check, but, uh, but uh, for goods uh, instead of for, uh, for people. Um, a, qu a question, if I could, uh, for Mr. Pickle. Uh, Mr. I love your name. I don't know if anybody's <laughs> told you that today. <laughs> it makes me smile when I say it. So. But, uh, and Ms. Smith, I lo love your name too, ma'am. <laughs> uh, in, uh, in your experience, for both of you, how would expanding programs like um, the one uh, that we're talking about here today, the Customs Trade Partnership Against Terrorism Pilot Program, uh, improve the efficiency and security of our supply chains, and what other measures should, should we consider here in Congress uh, to, uh, in order to modernize the screening of, of goods at our borders? All right. Mr. Pickle, you want to go first? Sure. I just want to say your name again. Thank you. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, I, I would say uh, any any effort to expand the participation in the CTPAD, I'll, I'll use the acronym, um, uh, partnership participants would be helpful so long as those participants do have uh, full control of their of their supply chain. Um, they would need to meet those requirements and, and understand the you know limitations of, of what exists within their uh, business models. Um, I, I, I would say that you know an important part of reconsidering the the role of, of CTPAT would be you know how can that cadre of, of willing experts in industry be used to uh, tackle new and emerging risks in the custom space, um, and, and also, you know, how can we look at the uh, the value that businesses are getting within their business models? Um, because the, it does require significant resources to part to participate in these programs. All right, thanks, Miss Smith. Any, any thoughts? Thank you. My name isn't quite as, as interesting as my colleagues, but uh, well, you have a boot on your foot on your right foot. I do. It just. Are you okay? I am. Thank Good. you, sir. I used to wear one of those. Ugh, it's a terrible thing. I broke my foot running a half marathon All right. on the first mile. I don't have as good a story. Oh, but. <laughs> but it ended well. Thank you. Um, I think we have an opportunity to take a look at how we use trusted traders, um, whether it's the, the CTPAT program or the Authorized Economic Operator Program around the world, and really look at the process that we use to facilitate low-risk trade. By and large, the members of partnership programs are meeting a very high standard for security and for trade compliance. And I think we could um, take a look at the process using a managing by account approach, provide more data up front or data up front, and let the individual transactions, the individual shipments, which are relatively low risk, flow through. Um, I think that that would set a standard, an international standard, and then can we can use that um, for our businesses around the world through mutual recognition agreements. All right, thanks for that. One last uh, question I can back to you, Mr. Pickle. Uh, there's been uh, discussion about the pros and cons of the de minimis program, but I want to focus on one specific uh, quirk of the program related to the foreign trade zones. Every state uh, in our country has at least one foreign trade zone, as you know, and Delaware's no exception to that. Currently, goods entering the, uh, the U.S. from other countries are eligible to use the de minimis provision. However, goods imported through the U.S.-based foreign trade zones into the U.S. markets are not. Uh, I'm concerned that this disparate uh, treatment may have unintended consequences, such as giving foreign distributors a cost advantage over distributors located in the U.S. foreign trade zones, and this may in turn incentivize e-commerce operations to be located offshore rather than in U.S.-based foreign trade zones that employ American workers. 
quick question. In your experience, how do you think that U.S. companies would benefit if they could take advantage of de minimis when they import goods through foreign trade zones? Just briefly. U.S. companies would benefit from the use of de minimis uh, thresholds of being applied to entries through foreign trade zones. Um, I would say that we would want to work closely with you to make sure that that's done in a, in a precise way that doesn't have unintended consequences. All right, fair enough. Thank you. Thank you for your brevity. There you go.